everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a travel review of India. We recently just spent two months in India. A lot of people asked me to do this video because I think India is a country that a lot of people don't really know about. It gets a lot of negative media, so a lot of people just think negative things when they think of India. So yeah, I wanted to go over the, the good things and the bad things that we faced during our two months. So overall, we visited Delhi, Agra, Rajasthan, Mumbai, then we went to Goa, Gokana, and Kerala. So we did cover quite a lot of India. There's still a lot of other regions, but yeah, we did cover a lot of different places and we saw a lot of different things. So yeah, I think I will be able to give a pretty good review. And this is obviously gonna be the things that we faced and we saw. It might be different for somebody else on their trip, but all, all I can do is speak for ourselves, me and my wife, what we witnessed and how we felt. So first I'm gonna start off with the amazing historic constructions. Throughout India you're gonna find so many amazing historic palaces, forts, tombs and temples. There's just all sorts of stuff. It was by far the best country that me and my wife have ever gone to for historic buildings. As we were traveling, it was actually kind of hard to believe how these things must have been made um, thousands and thousands of years ago. So you have many constructions from the Mughal times when the Mughals ruled over India. You have constructions from the colonial times, so some British buildings, Portuguese churches. And as I mentioned, you have temples from the majority of the religions. So you can find Jain temples, Buddhist temples, Hindu, you can find mosques as well. So you have a wide range of all the different kind of buildings. Obviously, India is famous for having Taj Mahal, which is one of the new wonders of the world. But as you travel through India, you'll see that there's multiple other buildings that are at the same level or maybe even better than the Taj Mahal. So there's many stuff like the Taj Mahal throughout India. The next is going to be the most surprising one for me and my wife, which is the diversity that you will find in India. So during our months, we went through deserts in Rajasthan, more jungle-like scenery in Goa and Kerala and Gokana. We also got some amazing beaches in Goa, Gokhan and Kerala. We saw incredible tea plantations, modern cities like Mumbai, old cities, parts of Delhi. Also the different states have completely different languages, different foods, and even the people act differently. So as you're traveling through India, if you're going to different states, you will literally feel like you're visiting different countries because one state will have pretty much nothing in common to another state. Pretty much feels like you're visiting a continent. So going from Rajasthan to Kerala would feel like going from England to Romania. So it can also be confusing as you travel one day to the next and you just seem like you've gone to a completely different place, but that is also incredible at the same time. It's good because if you didn't like one area, there's a big chance that you're gonna like the next one because it is gonna be completely different. Keep in mind that we only visited a few places also, so India still has the Himalayas and many other regions that we didn't visit. So yeah, if I travel to those, I'd see that it's even more diverse than I already think it is, which is pretty crazy. Next is gonna be the incredible Indian food. For us, India has been the best country for food. We're pretty much vegetarian. We eat a bit of fish every now and again. And we often struggle in a lot of countries because a lot of countries have just meat-based dishes. They don't really have good vegetarian food. But if there is one thing that India has, it is amazing vegetarian food. I think the actual majority of the food is vegetarian. So when you're looking at the menus, it looks like it's about 70% vegetarian. There are actually some areas where it's only vegetarian. There's some areas of India where it's, uh, it's illegal, it's against the law to have meat and it surprised me just how many local dishes they have. Obviously when we go to places, other countries, you always have the local cuisine. It doesn't seem to be as much as India. When you go to places in India, it seems to be a menu of a hundred different options and it's all Indian food. They obviously still have all the Western food as well, especially if you go to the South, there's a lot more meat-based food than in the North. We just felt so healthy eating in India because all the food, like I said, it's vegetarian based. You have all the spices, 
just very healthy food and I think it's the best that we've eaten in any country so far. It was just it was just great eating really healthily every single day. And since I'm talking about food, a lot of people ask me, did I get the famous deli belly? Did I have any um, issues with food poisoning? And in the two months we actually didn't. Although I do have to say whenever I got a bit of a, a funny stomach, I would always take an activated charcoal supplement. So I'm not sure if that uh, worked miracles, but neither me or my wife had food poisoning during the two months. And we've had food poisoning in multiple other countries. A lot of the countries in Southeast Asia, we had it in Mexico recently. I've had it in Brazil before. My immune system isn't the best when it comes to food poisoning. And yeah, two months in India, and we never had food poisoning and we was always eating local dishes and local foods. Next is how affordable everything is. I think for us it was the most affordable country that we've ever visited. Like I said before, we have visited Southeast Asia, places like Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines, where things are also quite cheap. But I think India was cheaper because a lot of the tourist attractions were still kind of cheap. When I compare to other countries, usually when you do tourist attractions, the price can actually go quite high. Even the Taj Mahal, which is one of the most famous attractions, was around $15, $16 per person. So yeah, very cheap. I'm not going to go too much into detail about the price. I'm going to make another video after this, and then I'm going to break down all our costs during the travel but it was the most affordable trip we've ever been on. Next is just how welcoming the people are in general. Obviously, we did run into some bad characters. I'm gonna go over that later on um, when I go on to the negative parts of India, but we did meet a lot of extremely welcoming people. Many people are just like really excited to meet you. A lot of people have never even met or sometimes never even seen a foreigner before, so it was kind of crazy how excited people would be. So many times you'd have families and stuff wanting to take pictures with you. You just basically get treated really special by some people. We even had uh, multiple occasions where people uh, would buy tea for us, masala chai, and that's never happened in any other country. We've been to other countries with friendly people, but we've never had the, the locals try and buy us stuff. And then when I would try and buy them some tea back, they wouldn't accept it. So yeah, it was just nice. Never experienced that before. Okay, so now on to the negatives. The stereotypes of India that a lot of people think um, India is like throughout India. And it's not all wrong. There are areas where these things exist. So to a lot of Westerners, maybe it's because of the Western media, I don't know. But a lot of people think India as a whole is dirty chaotic, uh, busy, lots of poverty, touts and scammers, beggars and just animals everywhere. And as I mentioned before, these can be true, it basically depends where you go. So at the start of our trip, we uh, went to Delhi, Agra and Rajasthan. And in those three areas, you can find a lot of these negative stereotypes. So when we first arrived in India, we actually stayed in Old Delhi which ended up being a lot worse than I expected. I don't think I really could imagine just how dirty and chaotic a place could be because we've traveled to other busy places before, but Delhi was definitely a whole other level of just chaos, pollution. Yeah, just animals everywhere. And it would just be stinky, unhygienic, but that's because it was old Delhi. The whole of Delhi is not like that, so we also went to New Delhi, which is a lot more modern. It was pretty much clean, not as chaotic, people didn't bother us. So even in the same city, just like anywhere else, you can find really bad areas and really good areas, although the really bad in India, yeah, I think is extremely bad from from what we saw. There were definitely some areas that I saw poverty on a level that I've never seen before. It did surprise me a bit because I have been in other poor countries, developing countries in Southeast Asia, South America and Central America, but the stuff I saw sometimes driving around in Mumbai or in Agra or in Delhi, yeah, a lot worse than anything I've seen before. So that did surprise me quite quite a bit and it yeah, it was quite sad I guess, but it's not, it's not everywhere. And I think this is why India has um, this image to the rest of the world. From what I understand, Delhi, Agra and Rajasthan are the most visited areas of India. 
And from what we saw, these three are basically the areas that have the worst um, stereotypes, like I just said. So for example, Agra. Taj Mahal is probably the most famous thing in India. Probably the place that the majority of tourists travel to when they go to India. But if you, if you see Agra, the whole place is basically just filthy, extremely poor. So the Taj Mahal in itself is obviously very clean inside, but the whole area outside of it, yeah, it's just pretty awful and run down. So unfortunately, a lot of tourists are going to have that image of India because they will have visited Taj Mahal, but they would have seen how Agra is. And I thought it was a real shame that the local government don't do anything to clean it up because the amount of money that they're getting from people visiting the Taj Mahal, it's pretty unbelievable that they can't just pay a group of people to clean the streets and just work on the image a bit better. You don't see any trash cans or even many signs trying to give people the initiative to not litter, stuff like that. So a lot of the really touristy areas aren't that well kept. And like I said, again, I think that's why um, India does have this image for sure. And as I mentioned before, the touts and scammers. In Delhi and Agra, it was pretty unbearable some days just how many people would be approaching you to try and sell you stuff. They would follow you around, um, just loads of scammers. We found uh, Rajasthan to be a lot easier place to travel in. We love Rajasthan as well. And then once we started heading south, so to Goa, Gokhan, and Kerala, Basically our entire trip changed, everything became really relaxed. There wasn't that many touts or scammers, never any beggars. We didn't really see any slums I don't think in the, in the south so it didn't seem to be as poor either. It also wasn't as chaotic, a lot of the places were quite empty and there wasn't as much trash so in Goa what I really liked is that in every beach we'd go to there would always be a beach cleaning team. Usually is some ladies and they go around every day cleaning up the beach so the beach was always pretty much spotless and just in general Goa wasn't that dirty. It seemed like the locals there understood to not yeah, trash nature that it is a negative thing to do. In the south we almost didn't face that much of the negative things that are associated with India at all and we were finally able to let our guards down a bit. It felt like when we was further up north we always had our guards up, always expecting a scammer to come around, the tower. Um, yeah, just something I guess unpleasant. It wasn't really a relaxing vacation at start in India but then as we would head down south everything became really relaxing and yeah just no real negative days or moments not that many anyway and i've saved the worst for last and this is actually really terrible i'm gonna have to be honest about this but it was just the amount of creepy men with with my wife my wife had a lot of problems with just creepy guys it was a lot worse in delhi and agra and some areas of rajasthan where basically they'd just be these groups of guys just staring at her the whole time. I'd be right next to her, nobody would look at me, and I'm the six foot white guy. I stand out a lot more than she does. A lot of people even think she looks kind of Indian. Barely anyone would look at me and it would just be these groups of guys staring at her the whole time. So just really intimidating and it wouldn't be a quick look. Sometimes they'd just stand there just staring and even if you look at them they wouldn't look away. So even if my wife would look at them, they just keep staring at her, looking her up and down. And this happened a lot at the start and we almost, we almost left India because of this, because it was just so bad. When we went further down south, so to go and Kerala, the people changed there. They seemed to be a lot more respectful. They seemed to understand how uncomfortable and intimidating this would be for a woman. So all the locals there would not look at all. But then unfortunately you still have the Indian tourists, the domestic tourists from other states that go there on vacation and they have the same behavior. So you see these groups of guys walking on the beaches and they're just staring at all the women with these fixed stares. It's, it's really creepy. If, if you've been to India, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. And they even go around filming and taking pictures and not even trying to hide it sometimes. They'll just go up to people and just women in bikinis and just be taking pictures of them and stuff. So just very uncomfortable. Even the owners of our guest house were telling us, oh, watch out for these people from other states. I don't know where they're from, but obviously, I don't know. They're from some area where there's more of a backwards society. I don't know, but 
it was really annoying. But the actual Goans and Kerala people that are locals are just not like that at all. It's not all the Indian tourists that are visiting. There's still these groups of guys that will pass, they won't really look, but then Pretty much every day there, were, there was a group that would just walk by, stare and take pictures and stuff. And so many times we had to ask people to stop taking pictures or just go away. And it was really hard for me as, as her husband to not get really angry. I wouldn't be able to do that with their wife and an Indian, another Indian wouldn't be able to do that with their wife either. But for some reason with foreign women they just think that there's no rules. I, I don't know what they're thinking to be honest, I, I really don't understand it. We saw this happen with other women, we saw other women telling them to go away and stuff and yeah, it's just not cool really. So when my wife would tell them to go away, they kind of just laughed. They wouldn't even say they weren't doing anything, they kind of just accept they were doing it. But when I'd go up to them and say, what are, what are you doing, they'd just kind of put their head down, they wouldn't reply, they wouldn't laugh and they'd walk away quickly. For that reason, we just don't see um, India as being safe for a solo female traveller. I mean, even my wife with me, we had all these issues. I'm not sure if she had more issues because a, a lot of guys would say, oh, she looks like a Bollywood actress because my wife has dark hair and she's kind of, yeah, face is, is tan but light skin like the, the Bollywood actresses. So I don't know if it's because she's their kind of type of what they think is attractive in, in what they see on TV or something, if it was worse for her and a lot of areas in India as you're walking around it's, it's pretty much like 99% men in some areas so imagine you're walking through these areas and it's just all these men just staring at you I, I don't know how you could handle it as a, as a woman to be honest as a foreign girl and if you are a sol solo female traveler I would do a lot of research and not go to any busy areas and like I said I would at least go to a place like Goa or Kerala and yeah, just be just be careful really because even if these guys weren't going to do anything, just the fact that you've just got these groups of men just staring at you the way they stare, you're just going to feel scared, you know what I mean? And obviously a lot of you that follow this channel know that when, when we first arrived in India, we went to an area called Paha Ganj, which is a popular backpacker area. I did some research on it and all I found was that it's popular with backpackers. I didn't... I didn't realize just how bad the place would be, so one guy grabbed my wife's arm, just just grabbed her, I don't know why, and then 20 minutes later another guy passed and grabbed her stomach. I think just to touch her, because they would just grab and then walk off. But it turns out that that was just a really awful area, actually one of the worst areas in India. I don't know why it's popular with backpackers, it's right next to a red light district a lot of drug addicts there, stuff like that, so it was just a bad area and then I did a lot of research and kind of saw that this should probably not happen in other places that we were going to travel to. And this didn't just happen with me, we met a Bolivian guy that in Delhi and Varanasi where someone just went to touch his girlfriend. This guy actually ended up hitting them both times, so yeah, ended up getting, getting violent with him. And we did meet in Goa some uh, female solo traveller saying that she was followed by a guy in Delhi. So Delhi just seems like not a good area to go from what people keep telling me. Even among Indians, Delhi doesn't seem to have a good reputation. But like I said, Delhi does have a whole modern part which does seem a lot better. But yeah, it does have this big bad part, old Delhi, unfortunately. And the other female solo travellers, when we'd ask them, a lot of them I guess the stairs didn't bother them too much, but they'd all have these kind of tactics where they'd say, oh, when I'm walking past a group of guys, I just stare at them angrily and walk by, and then everything's okay. But if you think about it, that's already not good, right? You don't go on a vacation to have to have all these mind games and trying to act strong to these groups of guys. You should just be able to walk freely and not have to think about that at all. I'm just being completely honest because I don't want a female to go to India by herself because of this video and then have problems because of a video I made so I've just got to be honest about what happened with us anyway. It's just this small portion of guys that kind of ruin it for everyone in some areas. Like I said in Delhi, it, it almost seemed like the majority in old Delhi were like that, just these creepy guys. So anyway, I'm not going to ramble on more about this. It, it is a really bad thing though, I think in my in my opinion.
I might as well include our favorite places that we visited in India. Maybe give you some ideas on some awesome places that you can visit. So pretty much the whole of Rajasthan we really loved. Um, the best places that we visited there was Jaipur, also known as the Pink City. Had some amazing palaces and also some incredible forts as well that we visited. We even got shown around by one of the guards there so that was cool and he was explaining everything about the fort and the palace. Also in Rajasthan there was Jodhpur that is also known as the Blue City because it has many blue buildings and Jodhpur also had another incredible fort that you could spend many hours there and have some amazing views of the city as well so definitely another place we'd recommend. Rajasthan also has Udaipur which we loved, it was more of a laid back place and it's known as the city of the lakes or the Venice of the east because it has many man-made lakes and rivers just yeah really beautiful pretty romantic city great for couples to go to that's for sure and our favorite spot in Rajasthan was a tiny little village called Kuri village pretty much we were the only tourists when we were there we stayed in some really raw authentic but actually made out of uh, cow manure and that was the place where we did the desert safari on camels and yeah just one of the highlights of the trip overall and that's where we got to sleep beneath the stars and see the yeah the shooting and falling stars so yeah definitely an experience that we'll never forget other than that we really love Goa we went to Goa for one week and we ended up spending three weeks there we just kept extending every day so there we, we spent time in Arambol, Anjuna, a place called Velsau and Palolem and overall our favorite was Palolem, the beach there was incredible and we ended up spending 8 days in Palolem, definitely recommend going there but pretty much all go was amazing, one of the best beach destinations that we've ever been to each beach and place has something different, some beaches are more for families, other beaches are a bit more hippie, other ones seem a bit more westernized, some others more local and you even get some deserted beaches there so Goa truly has something for everyone and then the last was Kerala literally in Kerala we just loved every single place that we visited so we spent some time in Muna in the tea plantations doing some trekking going on tours just every single thing there is absolutely beautiful so green and just an incredible spot after that we did the most famous thing in Kerala which is the backwaters so we went to a place called Alepi and then from there we did a little private boat tour and once again just an incredible tour the scenery there was completely beautiful you see all the the locals living their lives along the river and lake edges and just a sea of coconut trees all along the sides as well so yeah just an extremely beautiful boat trip and then in the end we ended up spending a few days in one of the beach destinations in Kerala called Vakala which was another amazing beach, one of the best beaches that we visited in India. It was actually our second favorite beach after Palolem. It's on a cliff edge so pretty unique to anything else you'll see in India and we definitely recommend visiting there. So that is pretty much my review, the positives and negatives. Obviously in the end we did think India was amazing, we wouldn't have spent two months there but yeah you just gotta watch out on certain things. We did have some of the worst experiences we've ever had and we've had some of the most incredible experiences we've ever had also. We've had many moments that we'll never forget, especially the night in the, the desert in Rajasthan and just in general a lot of the amazing nature, amazing buildings. It is a truly incredible place it has a lot of issues if they did clean it up a bit and yeah they sorted out this issue with a lot of the men and stuff india would probably be the number one travel destination in the world but yeah unfortunately there are these negative things for me the positives do outweigh the negatives yeah it's just a crazy place in india does have a reputation of just being a crazy place right and from traveling it is the most crazy unique place i've ever been so if you do go to India and you are in an area and you're not enjoying it, just like I said, remember that you can just go to another state and have a completely different holiday. I would do a lot of research before you go. If you're a person that doesn't like chaos and stuff, just avoid the chaotic states and chaotic cities 
and yeah, go to the places that are relaxed and you're probably gonna have an absolutely incredible vacation. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like to see more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.